Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets. And I break them down to bite-sized pieces. So today, let's talk about what's going on with this dip in the market. And we'll take a look at what has happened in the past, what is happening right now, and uh, just to realize that uh, it's really just more par for the course. On top of that, we'll take a look at a new public earnings report, which is put out by Coinbase ahead of their April 14th IPO. And then we'll uh, finish up with a couple of great stories. One is from Storm. Formex, and we were uh, we had Simon Yu on the channel over there at uh, Alex Masioli, what he talked about and uh, what is happening behind the scenes. And then finally, just as a quick update, uh, IRS is catching uh, crypto tax cheat via summons. So that's always fantastic when you hear this great news. And we'll go over what, what you can do with all that. Uh, but first, let's take a look at what is exactly going on today. So right now it is um, uh, April 7th. It is almost 10 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. And um, hey, the market just took a little bit of a dip, huh? So we lost you know, like a hundred billion uh, market cap, but uh, not a big deal. And I say that with the most amount of respect and assurance. Uh, I know if you're new to this space, you're like, what the heck just happened? Well, crypto just happened. That's just how it is. So um, yeah, we went over 2 trillion. Then we we dropped down to, uh, you know, 1.8, 1.86 billion or something like that. 1.86 tr trillion. And these things happen. So uh, don't be alarmed. Uh, that's just what it is. And we'll take a look in a bit. So let's just break it down to actually what is happening. Let me load this up so you can see it uh, with Bitcoin in general. So Bitcoin topped out around 61,000. Now we're at 56. Ethereum has dipped below the 2000. Binance coin 376. Even though Binance coin is up in seven days, 22%. Uh, XRP up 68%. But over the last 24 hours, everything is pretty much down. There's some things that are up, but um, I mean, for the most part, that's what it is. Theta is up 7%. That's crazy. Hey, good for them. 18% for Solana and so on and so forth. So yeah, this just happens and that's just uh, pretty much how it is. And real quick on the projected range, if you're a big trader, this obviously is trade the chain. You can take a look uh, below uh, for a link to uh, use the sentiment analysis. So look at Digital Note, Harmony, StormX, Raiden Network, Bow Finance, Linear, and Solana. As over the next hour or so, you're you could look at 13%, 5%, 4%, 5% gains based on sentiment analysis. Anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. Let's just jump into uh, exactly what we have as far as, you know, uh, the history. So the history, and I like to always bring this up because I know when people uh, are especially new, or even if you've been around for a while, you probably look at these things like, man, I don't really think this is right. Should this really drop this much? Yes, it should. And um, here's a quick little snippet uh, that I've been saving uh, about from the last uh, bull run. So just remember in 2016, 2017, everything goes in four year cycles uh, for the last eight years. Now, past performance does not equal out to uh, present day what could happen. But over the last eight years, this is what's been going on. And uh, we've had things uh, drop down 38%, 38%, 33, 38, 36, 29. As we took that big, huge uh, parabolic run-up in 2017, when uh, Bitcoin hit a measly $20,000, the market cap was a uh, paltry $840 billion, somewhere around there. And uh, alts, you know, had a little bit of a spur, which now seems almost laughable. Can you imagine right now if we went back down to less than a trillion dollars, people would lose their minds. Me personally, I'd be like, well, thanks for the sale. I'm pretty happy. I appreciate that. And I'll buy some more. But uh, that's what's going on uh, in the past. And of course, we just had a bit of a dip again. And just like uh, this is a nice little chart right here from uh, uh, early December. Um, January 2021, and we see 20% dips, 18% dips as we just continue to, to elevate. So here's the thing. Again, if you're new, this is uh, very scary, uh, but just calm down. This is in the traditional markets. Um, we are expecting these things. And usually when things go like this, we say to buy the dip. That's very hard if you went all in uh, when it was doing this. It's very hard to do that. And that's why I say, don't do that. So what I want you to do, or actually, I can't give you financial advice. I'm, I'm sorry to even say that. But uh, what I do is I dollar cost average. And uh, I have a set amount. And every day I buy a certain amount of cryptocurrency. And that's pretty much it. 
And then over time, I've been doing this for the last, uh, since 2017, and it uh, seems to work out pretty well over time. Now, if you're uh, in it for a get rich quick, there are no get rich quick schemes. I mean, you can pick the right one and uh, kind of ride that train, but it's very risky. And uh, that is not uh, me, but uh, there's plenty of YouTubers you can follow and they'll tell you all day long about which uh, thousand X gems are out there and uh, go follow them. But for me, it's just slow and steady. Usually works out just trying to be an investor, keep level headed, and then uh, off I go. The big thing for me is I don't really care about today. I don't really care about these dips uh, because I know, or I think I know, or I think I have a good understanding of where things could potentially go. And I just look at the past four year dips, having all time high dip reset. This is from 2012. Then again, 2016 to 2019, uh, same thing. And 2020 is going to repeat. Now, is it going to go all the way up? I have no idea. Is the bear market going to last for you know two years or so? I have no idea. But I can tell you this, 2021 is going to be a fantastic year. There are so many institutions, so many people coming out. There are so many people getting into this space. Um, this is, you can never give guarantees, but it's looking pretty good. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. So next up, congratulations, Coinbase. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds funny coming out of my mouth. Uh, I'm not a big fan of, of Coinbase because as you get into the market, you start to realize you know the fees that are pretty crazy. And for some people, they realize that. But I have to always take a step back and look at, uh, it's not just about me, it's about everybody. And a lot of people who are coming in, Coinbase is the easiest option. It is the simplest. There are no you know, a bunch of graphs and charts and, 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 and market prices and set limits and everything else. It's just buy and go. Super simple. Um, and everybody seems to uh, agree that sometimes with simplicity, you know, you have to have that price. And uh, that's just what it is. So Coinbase is going to go public. They're having their IPO um, on April 14th. So they have to start to report these different uh, uh, metrics. And one of those is they just said this. And I'm just going to. I'm going to skip over the all the uh, the text because a picture is worth a thousand words, and uh, this is what we've got right here. Let me blow this up so you can see this. Uh, this is potential. Is just it. This is all you got to really know. So in quarter one, this is in 2019. Look at this all the way to, the left, to uh, all the way to the left. 66 million quarter one 2019. Remember 2017 was like the big year, and look at that 66 million. Quarter two 211, 159, 98, 191. Quarter two 2020. 186, then almost doubled in Q320. Q4 2020 was monstrous. I'm sure when they went from 315 to 585, again, almost a double. So they went from 186, 315 to 585. They're like, wow, can we do any better? Look at Q1 2021, 1 1.8 billion. That's all you got to know for this entire article. They are crushing it. They are crushing it. And of course, yes, you're going to say that uh, they are crushing it based on. Uh, yeah, everybody's fees and, and what people are paying for. And you would be correct, but uh, it is what it is. So when people talk about uh, Coinbase and how good or bad it is, uh, this is what we uh, actually have. Oops, wrong one. Let me jump back. So really just to finish up this article, it just talked about a couple of metrics. Uh, this was from CEO Brian Armstrong, where he says, hey, on our, our Q1 earnings call on Tuesday, we announced 56 million verified users for Q1 of 2021. So that's just the users that they have all signed up and are actually uh, there in the system. That's not the uh, monthly users. Uh, Coinbase says it has monthly transaction users of 6.1 million. So I know when people talk about, you know, like they reach out to Coinbase and they try to get uh, customer service and they don't get anything. Maybe it's because they got so many people on there. And uh, that is a lot more than I thought they actually had. But uh, again, that is no excuse. If you're making that much money, you can afford to hire people and get them going. But I will tell you this. Uh, I've never made uh, uh, over a billion dollars. Not yet. Uh, but if I had all that money, it still would be very difficult to get all the people in there, all the people trained the right way, answering the questions correctly, and get them on track to up to speed to where they need to be to answer all your questions. So again, growing pains, and we're seeing a lot of that, especially with Voyager. And uh, I know there's a lot of different issues going on, and we're trying to get uh, Steve on the show again, and uh, hopefully he can answer what's going on there. And that is what's going on with uh, 
with Coinbase itself. And um, April 14th, they say, is going to be a catalyst uh, for the cryptocurrency market. I tend to think that uh, anything after uh, IRS taxes uh, really starts start to set things off. That's why you always see like April not is a pretty good month towards the end and then May. But of course, in the US, we've been pushed from April 15th uh, tax deadline into May 15th. So I think uh, May, end of May, June will be a pretty great year after this IPO. So let me just think of the comments section. Let's move on to our last two pieces. So next up, uh, StormX. So if you're on the channel, I'd like to invest into people. I don't, I mean, projects are great, right? Uh, you know, you have to have a good projects or you have to have a, a good working use case. And there's a lot of those out there, but I like to invest into people. And we had Simon Yu from uh, StormX over on Alex Mascioli's channel. I'll, I'll link this, uh, the video uh, to what we talked about. And it was great. And he had a lot of great answers and a lot of things that they're trying to do uh, as far as like pushing things forward. And these are not a fly by night type of operation. They've been in business since 2014. If you don't know StormX, it's pretty great because what it can do uh, essentially is just uh, save you a bunch of money and give you crypto back for all the things that you, that you buy. And when you go to uh, the website, uh, there's a, a section there to actually download the uh, Google Chrome or Brave browser uh, extension. You can also get the uh, the app on your iPhone and, and Android. And what's great about it is is like when you go to different places. Like I'm gonna go. Let me go to Adidas. That's the easiest example I can pick, right? So when you go to any kind of these uh, websites, this little thing will pop up and it'll say like up to two percent crypto cash back. Activate now, and then you just activate it. Whatever you buy, you get uh, cash back in crypto. And things really do add up after a while. And I think it's a pretty cool thing, especially since it's very global. I mean, it's global and it's going to be out there. The problem is, is that it took a big dump yesterday. Uh, I thought it was a great interview. I thought, man, maybe that interview kind of sucked. What the hell happened? And then I realized that uh, nice little tweet today says, we are so sorry to inform you that Walmart is no longer available in StormX. Starting at 10 p.m. today, we're going to bring them back online in the future. But so look, um, when you're out there, and the reason I brought this up is because when you're out there and you're looking at uh, all these different low cap gems, 1,000x, 100x, uh, just make sure that, you, that uh, the project actually does something. Uh, it has a working product and actually uh, is functioning and can do things. And like Simon was talking about on the show, he's like, look, 90% of crypto can't do squat. You can't do anything right now. It's just a speculative market. He goes, with our token, I mean, yeah, you can stake it. And then, of course, you get more cashback rewards, the more tokens that you have. He's like, we've been in, in business since 2014. We have over 750. And I was like, you know what? I like that. And he started to talk about charity and giving back and giving more, more money to the users. Makes sense to me. So uh, when you're looking at these things out there, just look at, uh, does the project actually do something? Have they been around for a little bit of time? And, uh, you know, how does uh, everything work as far as the project itself and everything that uh, encompasses? So just take a look at those. And that is uh, uh, the thing with StormX. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And let's move on to our last piece. And really quickly, I will just say this. The IRS wants your money. Uh, this is in the United States. I know a lot of people are from Australia. Hello. Hello, Aussies, uh, UK, uh, India, and some, and a lot of parts of uh, uh, Southeast Asia and um, and Sub-Saharan Africa. So this is just for the United States. This is what's going on. But if you don't realize, we're printing a ton of money, like it's going out of style, and uh, this is the easiest way to get that some of that money back is the tax to live in tar out of every uh, man, woman, and even well, every man and woman out there. So what's going on here? So the IRS is actively hunting for crypto tax cheats by demanding crypto exchanges release user information through John Doe summons. Summons. On March 30th, 2021, a John Doe summons was issued to Kraken. On April 1st, uh, it was also issued to Circle. The John Doe summons issued to Kraken and Poloniex require exchanges to release user information from 2016 to 2020 on accounts with at least $20,000 in transaction value in any of those years. According to the IRS Commissioner Chuck Reddick, the John Doe summons is a step to enable the IRS to uncover those who are failing to properly report their virtual currency transactions. We will enforce the law where we find systemic noncompliance or fraud. And just so you know, tools like John Doe summons authorized today send the clear message to taxpayers that the IRS is working to ensure they are fully compliant in their use of virtual currencies. And uh, last thing, taxpayers who have properly filed their crypto taxes during the years under 
investigation 2016 to 2020 should not be concerned. So let me just say this. If I read that and your heart started to skip a beat because maybe you didn't do something, maybe you didn't report, whatever it is, it's okay. It's going to be all right. So let's get you on track. I know there's going to be, there's always going to be some in the comments that say taxation is theft and you don't have to pay any taxes and da da da. Sure. I'm not saying you don't have to pay taxes. I mean, yeah, I am. I'm saying you have to pay taxes. That's stupid. So, I mean, if you don't want to pay taxes in the US, there's a lot of options, I guess, for you. But uh, if you want to go through an audit like I did, yeah, have fun with that. It's, it's, it's pretty awful. So what I did is uh, I reached out to uh, David uh, Kemmer. He is the co-founder over there at CryptoTrader.tax just to see what's going on and how he can help us. So just so you know, I use CryptoTrader.tax personally. I've used it the last two years. I trust them thoroughly. I, from the time I started it up to actually got done, it took me 30 minutes except for Voyager because I had to get that CSV stupid file. Uh, but uh, everything else was an API, API integration. Very smooth. Sent it over. Everything was good. Done. If you want to go through uh, a lot of different uh, uh, documents and something like that, go right ahead. And if you have just a few transactions, you don't probably need crypto trader attacks. This is for somebody who's got like 50, 100, 200 transactions. They don't want to deal with all the things. So let's talk to David real quick and he can fill us in about what's going on with taxes. Everybody, I want to welcome uh, David Kemmer. He is one of the co-founders of CryptoTrader.tax. Uh, David, thanks for coming on and talking to us about uh, these issues. Like the article we just talked about, it seems like people are, uh, it, it concerns me greatly as the IRS starts to really pull their resources together to really focus in on just the little guy, you know, just a little guy uh, investing. So just talk to us about what you've seen uh, over there, over there, Crypto Trader, and what do you think's uh, coming down the pipe? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's not a surprise, right? We've seen crypto like explode in value over the last 12 months, with, which is great, right? And it fuels the space and companies like ours and just everyone in the space is doing well. And the IRS sees that and sees, hey, there's not much 1099 information reporting that's happening in terms of, you know, the Coinbase's and the Kraken's of the world reporting on customer information, which is very common in the equities world, which you could parallel to kind of how crypto is taxed. Um, so the IRS sees that as this huge tax gap, right? They see that there's millions and millions of people in the US who are investing and you know, likely making significant amount of money on crypto. And then they see on tax returns that, you know, a very small percentage of people are reporting that they had any type of crypto income on their tax return. So there's that gap. And Chuck Redding is actively trying to close that gap and he's becoming very aggressive about it. Of course, we see that again with the subpoenas now to Circle and rumored to crack in um, exactly how they went after Coinbase in 2015, I believe, is how they're going after the new folks. So it'll get sorted out in the courts and it's likely that Circle and Kraken will have to turn over some amount of customer records to the IRS, um, just like Coinbase had to. Um, but yeah, like they're, they're, they're getting serious. Um, and they have been for a while, right? It's not a secret. Yeah. See, cause like, I remember just a couple of years ago, or maybe it wasn't even last year where they were sending out, no, I think it was the last two years. They were sending out letters and going, Hey, Rob, we think you may have unreported some things. So, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Cause you, you just give us an information and it was like no big deal. But now it's more like subpoenas going out going, well, I mean, subpoenas are the exchanges. But I think what's going to happen coming on the pipe is that, look, we're, we're doing a ton of quantitative easing. There's a lot of money being pushed out and printed. And there's really one big way to get that, you know, that revenue back. And that is just to tax the living tar out of uh, people like you and me. So this is why I always talk about how important it is to your taxes. I know nobody wants to. There's only one assurance, you know, death and taxes. But uh, like, I, like I said before, I did this last year. I did this again. The time that I actually popped open the uh, the website and put all my information in with the API, it took me about 30 minutes, sent it over to my account, and everything was done. The only one I had to wait for was Voyager, but that was because they needed that do that CSV file. So yeah, you guys can't really help with that, but I've already introduced you to Steve. So maybe something like that will come on the pipe. Yeah, it, it's actually already better now. Um, so I, I've connected with Steve, he's a great guy. Um, and so that's, that's more streamlined now. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's not something that like we want to do, anyone wants to do. Um, but I do think it's smart to cover your bases. 
Perfect. And then uh, real quick, I get this question a lot, which is about uh, staking and how that works out with taxes. Because, yes. you know, first of all, do we have to pay tax on the staking? And second of all, how, do, how does crypto trader do that? Can they do that? Can it be reported or do we have to do it manually, which would suck? Right, exactly. Um, so it, it very much depends a little bit on how the staking actually happens, right? For some pools and, um, you know, incentive programs, it happens differently where the staking rewards kind of accrue, but they're not actually available in your wallet. But let's say in a traditional example where I'm um, staking assets and I'm kind of getting dripped staking rewards right into my wallet. Every time that you receive staking rewards, that's just treated as income at the fair market value in terms if you're in the US in US dollars yeah. at the time you receive it. So if I'm staking, you know, let's say Ethereum on the new 2.0 and I receive a staking reward of one Ethereum right today, which wouldn't happen, but I would recognize around $2,000 of income today. And then that's added to your taxable income. Now that income becomes your cost basis moving forward. So now for that one Ethereum that I received, that's I have a two thousand dollar cost basis. So let's say ETH skyrockets in price and goes to four thousand. If I sell that Ethereum, right, I have a two thousand basis. I sell it for four thousand. So there's also a two thousand dollar capital gain um, on the sale of the property. Um, so that's kind of how staking works. And with CryptoTrader.tax, you know, there's so much development activity, new protocols, new governance um, models launching really every day, which is great for the space. Makes it, <laughs> gives us a tough job for my team, but we're, we're scaling up fast now. So we're actively hiring if anyone in your audience wants to check out our career page. But um, in terms of just deeper integrations, um, you and I offline, we're talking about Cardano, um, the staking rewards there. So we don't support that right now, but all of these things are on our roadmap um, and it just takes time, right? So if you're receiving staking rewards from like things like on directly on Coinbase, you can now crack into, we pull that in no problem right now. If you're on Uniswap doing liquidity pool stuff, we rolled out Uniswap a couple months ago. So we're just going to keep doing that. We're going to keep doing what we do rolling out more and more integrations so that there is no manual work um, and you can just, you know, click a few buttons and we'll spit out your necessary stuff. So that's our job. And, you know, the next nine months, there's a lot to do, but um, it'll be good. Yeah, it'll be good. Yeah. Thanks for not making me do more work. I mean, no one likes more work. So thanks. We appreciate it. And then yep. just real quick, I know we talked about how, like, if they're staking on the exchanges, you guys pretty much cover that as far as the whole yep. spectrum, right? Yeah, exactly. Because that's just a little bit easier. We already consume all the exchanges APIs. So they just made that available. We can pull in, you know, staking reward, classify that in our under your account in our system. Um, it's not as difficult as like going out to the blo the blockchain data, like Cardano, right? Ethereum is a little easier, um, but this is technical jargon. Yes, um, for the exchanges, no problem. That's, we've got that covered. Perfect. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is what's coming down the pipe with you guys? Yeah. Uh, what's happening uh, that can really like propel crypto trader like the next level? Mm. So the first answer is more of the same, right? We, we have a model that's working. And so we just want to do more of that. So hire more people to build more integrations, to build better features, um, you know, that are just going to do exactly what you and I have said, no manual work, super simple, um, you know, tax reporting for any use case in crypto. Outside of that, we, we do want to move into a lot more portfolio tracking type capabilities. So, you know, real time PL across all of your platforms. Um, and that's a little bit more out in the future, but it's going to be awesome once we launch that. And that will be like completely free to use, um, unlike, you know, downloading your tax reports. So, there's a lot of ways we can go with it, but those are the two big things, right? It's just more and more and more integrations, DeFi, margin, right? All this stuff. And then moving into portfolio tracking, real time tracking. Perfect. Well, David, thanks for coming on the show. Uh, we all appreciate it because no one likes to do taxes. So there's just a couple of things. If you look in the description below, there's going to be a link to CryptoTrader.tax. Everybody who is a viewer of Dan, they get 20% off. On top of that, there's a video where I show you exactly how to use CryptoTrader.tax. It's very simple. API integration pulls all your, your information in. Very slick. Uh, unless you got KuCoin. That was my only one that I had a problem with because they had like three transactions, but it doesn't really matter. So on top, <laughs> on, on top of that, 
there's also a nice little thing going on with Crypto Trader. They are doing a weekly giveaway for a tax or an unlimited tax report, $300 value. Just put your first name and email, enter to win. David always draws it and then uh, emails those people. So those are the two big things. I will also link what David was talking about as far as the uh, information for to, to work with Crypto Trader, the uh, careers page. Link that in the description as well. And that is it. Uh, David, any uh, last words for uh, for us? Oh, I love your channel, Rob. And it's, it's a pleasure just jumping on and chatting with you. Um, so thanks for having me on. Great. Thanks for coming by. All right. So I'm glad David got my message to uh, wear his classic tee. No, I'm just kidding. He just wore a t-shirt. And uh, that is it for today. So look, if you found a value in this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps tremendously. Also consider subscribing because that always uh, is great. Uh, well, a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And I will link everything below in the description, pin a couple things at the top so you can find easily. And that is it for today. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.